Hello viewers, welcome to the next section, Variants of Trees. Let's start with the first video that deals with basic trees. Let's start with introducing trees. What are they? Do you have any ideas about how such a data structure should look? If not, let's take a look at this diagram, which depicts a tree with captions regarding its particular elements. A tree consists of multiple nodes, including one root, 100 in the diagram. The root does not contain a parent node, while all other nodes do. For example, the parent element of node 1 is 100, while node 96 has node 30 as the parent. Moreover, each node can have any number of child nodes, such as three children, that is, 50, 1 and 150, in the case of the root. The child nodes of the same node can be named siblings, as in the case of nodes 70 and 61. A node without children is named a leaf, such as 45 and 6 in the diagram. Take a look at the rectangle with three nodes, that is, 30, 96 and 9. Such a part of the tree can be called a subtree. Of course, you can find many subtrees in the tree. Let's briefly talk about the minimum and maximum numbers of children of a node. The C-sharp based implementation of a basic tree seems to be quite obvious and not complicated. To do so, you can declare two classes, representing a single node and a whole tree. Note that when you will run the program which will create, you will not see any output in the console. If you want to see how data of nodes are organised, you can debug the program and see values of variables while debugging. So first, let's create a class named tree node and add this code snippet here. It is declared as the generic class to provide a developer with the ability to specify the type of data stored in each node. Thus, you can create the strongly typed solution which eliminates the necessity of casting objects to target types. The class contains three properties, the data stored in the node of the type specified while creating an instance of the class, a reference to the parent node and a collection of references to child nodes. Apart from the properties, the tree node class contains the getHeight method, which returns a height of the node, that is, the distance to the root node. The implementation of this method is very simple, because it just uses the while loop to go up from the node until there is no parent element when the root is reached. The next necessary class is named tree, and it represents the whole tree. Let's create the class and add the related code snippet here. The class contains only one property, root. You can use this property to get access to the root node, and then you can use its children property to obtain data of other nodes located in the tree. It is worth noting that both tree node and tree classes are generic, and the same type is used in the case of these classes. For instance, if tree node should store string values, the string type should be used in the case of instances of tree and tree node classes. Do you want to see how to use a tree in a C-sharp based application? Let's take a look at the first example. The aim is to construct the tree with a few nodes, as shown in this diagram. Only the group of nodes with darker backgrounds will be presented in the code. However, it is a good idea to adjust the code to extend this tree by yourself. As you can see in the example, each node stores an integer value. Thus, int will be the type used for both tree and tree node classes. So, let's add the next part of the code in the main method in the program class. The code looks quite simple, doesn't it? At the beginning, a new instance of the tree class is created. Then, the root node is configured by creating a new instance of the tree node class, setting a value of the data property to 100, and assigning a reference to the tree node instance to the root property. In the next lines, the child nodes of the root node are specified. Nodes with values equal to 50, 1 and 150. For each of them, a value of the parent property is set to a reference to the previously added root node. The remaining part of the code shows how to add a child node for a given node, namely for the third child of the root node, that is, the node with value equal to 150. Here, only one node is added, the one with the value set to 30. Of course, you need to specify a reference to the parent node as well. That's all, you have created the first program that uses trees.
Within each department there can be another structure, such as in the case of the development team. Here, John Smith is head of development. He is a boss for Chris Morris, who is a manager for two junior developers, Eric Green and Ashley Lopez. The latter is also a supervisor of Emily Young, who is a developer intern. An example tree is shown in the following diagram. As you can see, each node should store more information than just an integer value. There should be an identifier, a name and a role. Such data are stored as values of properties in an instance of the person class. For that, we will this block of code here in the console. The class contains three properties, such as ID, name and role, as well as two constructors. The first constructor does not take any parameters, while the other takes three and sets values of particular properties. Apart from creating a new class, it is also necessary to add some code in the main method in the program class. Let's place the necessary lines of code. In the first line, a new instance of the tree class is created. It is worth mentioning that the person class is used as a type specified while creating new instances of tree and tree node classes. Thus, you can easily store more than one simple data for each node. The remaining lines of code look similar to the first example for basic trees. Here, you also specify the root node for the CEO role, then configure its child elements as these and set a child node for one of the existing nodes, namely the node for the head of sales.